In this lecture, I will discuss drawing title blocks and format sheets. I will explain the various sizes that format sheets come in, as well as the common markings found on the drawing format sheets. Next, we will examine some fairly typical drawing title blocks which will be followed by a discussion of the information that must be added to the title block to make it a valid legal document. Drawing sheets and drawing formats. This is an example of a 22 inch by 34 inch piece of paper or drawing sheet. Printed on this paper is a D-size drawing format. Highlighted here is the title block portion of the drawing format. Some drawing formats include special markings, like this symbol that indicates views placed on this sheet of paper are developed using third angle projection. Here is another special mark. It means that all dimensions are to be read as millimeters. Letters are placed vertically in the left and right borders, and numbers are spaced horizontally in the top and bottom borders. Together, the letters and numbers define a grid reference system. Center marks are also placed in the border for layout and folding purposes. Remember, this area is reserved for general notes. In a later lecture, you will learn that this area is also used to track drawing revisions. On assembly drawings, this area is also used as a parts list and a description of parts in the assembly. On an assembly drawing, this area is reserved for a table containing a list and a description of all parts used in the assembly. Let's take a minute and review the various drawing format sizes. Here is an ASME scaled 8.5 by 11 or A size drawing format. It is also referred to as an ISO a4 drawing format. An ASME B or ISO A3 size drawing sheet is twice the size of an A or A4 sheet of paper. In similar fashion, it takes two B size sheets of paper to make an A2 size drawing sheet. Here we see a D or A1 size drawing sheet. It is twice the size of the C or A2 sheet of paper. And finally, an E or A0 piece of paper is twice the size of a D. Other larger letter size format sheets exist. However, most companies just jump to a J size format. J size is defined as the height of the roll by however long the drawing needs to be. Let's now turn our attention to the title block portion of the format. It is the information contained in the title block, or the lack thereof, that makes the drawing a legal binding document or not. As we have learned already, the ASME and ISO standards control the drawing format. In a similar way, they exert influence over the information placed in the title block. The title blocks used by industry come in all shapes and degree of complexity. Here are just a few examples. Here are examples of vendor-provided CAD title blocks. From what we have seen on the last two slides, the important takeaway is every block 
or cell of any title block was created to hold an important piece of data. If blanks exist in the title block, the drawing is not ready for release and neither the checker nor engineer should initial or sign the title block. To illustrate this point, if this drawing were turned into me for grading, I would not give it a second look, based solely on the incompleteness of the title block. Nor would I grade this unfinished assembly drawing. If I did, I would give it simply a zero as of the grade. That said, let's now focus on getting the title block filled out correctly. I hope by now you recognize this object as our size and location block. In previous lectures, I used this block to illustrate correct drawing view placement, dimensioning styles, and correct note annotation. Here, I've added a Siemens B-size drawing format and title block to the previously created drawing of the size and location block. The remainder of this lecture will focus on completing and editing the default Siemens title block. For a typical title block to be complete, it needs to contain the following information company name and information, part or assembly name, part or assembly number, date, drawing scale, revision number, drawing sheet size, which projection method was used to lay out the views, the material the part was to be made from, surface finish, general tolerance block, drawn by, checked by, approved or engineered by, sheet number of total number of sheets in the set. Let's see where each of these bits of data are placed in the Siemens title block. Here is the Siemens logo. One can simply edit this cell of the title block table and, put, and replace it with your personalized or company logo and address. Here I've edited the title cell of the table and entered the part name. I also increased the text font size. By default, Siemens automatically enters the model file as the drawing number. I edited this cell and entered the number 231-429-112. This is the first issued date cell, and I entered the date I finished this drawing. This is the scale cell, and it indicates the size or scale of the base view. Siemens fills this cell in automatically. Next is the sheet revision cell or block. By default, it is set to A, meaning the original unchanged, unmodified drawing. I will devote a future lecture to revisions and engineering change orders. Title blocks must indicate the size of paper that they are to be printed on. Our example here is to be printed on a 11 by 17 or B size sheet of paper. I have edited the default Siemens title block so that I could place the third angle projection symbol inside the cell. Some CAD systems allow the projection symbol to be placed anywhere on the sheet. I personally believe it is better to have this symbol be a formal part of the drawing title block. 
Here, I've added a cell to the default Siemens title block to hold the material callout. Another cell was added to hold the surface finish callout. The general tolerance callout looks more like a note. So I have placed it above the title block in the space that is reserved for notes. This is the drawn by cell. The responsible draftsman would typically enter their initials. This is the checked by cell where the drafting supervisor or checker whose role it is to make sure that the drawing meets the company standards, would letter their initials once the drawing passes their approval. This is the approved by or engineer cell. Either the project or lead engineer digitally signs the drawing or it is physically signed after it is printed. Most companies treat a signed drawing as a legal binding document. Between those who designed the part and those who must now manufacture it. In this cell of the title block, we indicate which page of the total number of pages make up a complete set. For this simple part, only one sheet of one is needed. Here is our complete size and location block drawing. It is ready to be printed on an 11 by 17 piece of paper and turned in for grading. Remember, a good working drawing starts with a correctly chosen piece of paper and drawing format. The needed views are added and placed correctly on the drawing sheet. Adequate room is left around the views so that the size and location dimensions can be neatly and appropriately added. Necessary notes are then added to provide information not conveyed by drawing views and dimensions. Finally, the title block is completely annotated. Before concluding this video, let's take a minute and reflect on the outcomes you should walk away with. You should know and be able to describe the various drawing si format sizes, both ASME and ISO. You should understand the importance of the drawing title block and what information is typically found or contained in the drawing title block. Thank you.